Hey, um, welcome or welcome back if you were here for the first video. It's Taylor Electro Silver Fox, and you're now watching the second video of this Floss Tube. Um, first, I want to thank you all for watching the first one. Um, you were really kind enough to leave comments and really sweet words for me to read, so that's really much appreciated. And yeah, thank you a lot. Special shout out to Nithya, who actually, <laughs> she put me on her feed and that was quite funny because I saw it when I got back from my internship. Uh, I was writing the um, Piro, um, Metro in Paris um, and just saw my face randomly in my feed. I was quite surprised. It was quite a shock. But um, yeah, really cute because it actually got a bit more people to join me here. So. Thanks a lot, Nithya, and thank you, everybody. For this second video, I initially wanted to make a regular, like, web update plans um, and a haul, actually, because yesterday I went to um, Nailworks Flea Market and bought some stuff. However, I did not have much time to stitch um, in the past two weeks because um, of my internship. Uh, that ended that I finished yesterday um, so yeah uh, I thought that it would be quite a nice interlude to tell you about a piece of work that I told you last um, video that is the least gay movies that's one of my personal projects um, so yeah flash of extra number one flash of video number two let's say um, a list of gay movies so, um, it actually began as a school project uh, because, yeah, I'm a um, fashion design student within art school, so I'm also an art student. Um, and one of my courses was um, textile art course. And it was, it, it was not a course designed to teach you a lot of what about um, techniques and stuff. It was more of like a space where you could develop a project and learn um, skills in order to create it. But if you'd already already have said skills, then you would, you know, have a window of time during the week at school to work on it. And that's actually what drove me to this um, course with a fantastic professor. Uh, because I was like, hey, I will have dedicated time to work on it. Um, and that was so cool. Um, my first idea was to create a sampler out of a typeface that I created last year uh, that I've designed, make an alphabet sampler around it. Um, but it kind of, like, it was not the right, the right time. I was not that much excited by it. I will do it. Um, but it was not the right time. And then I thought about making a gigantic quilt um, based on my family tree and my genealogy researches. However, said researches are not done yet, of course. Um, and no wonder most of people, most of the people who do them are retired because it takes a whole lot of time that I don't necessarily have, so I'm really slow in my researches. Especially, it's hard when you're not, when your ancestors are not strictly from the the country that you're in. Um, I'm only a quarter French. For the rest, I'm Slovenian, Portuguese, and so I have to dig these, um, you know, archives. But they're not all scanned. Um, they're not available. Um, further than like most of the time the beginning of the 20th century so I would have to go there and you know even though it's not so far away um, it's not something that I can easily do so um, this project I will do it because you know I have a strong relationship to my ancestry and it's a big part of my work however it was not the right time either and so you know the due date of the project was coming and 
whilst I got into this course because I was happy that I have a window to uh, work on my project at school during the week, I ended up creating a list of gay movies at home in like maybe three days of intense working in my room. You know, it's like going with the flow, the lemon, making the lemonade, etc. And like, I'm sure you will relate, but like most of great ideas, they come either under the shower or when you go to bed. And one day I went to bed and started to think about how much movies have influenced me during my upbringing. Um, fun fact, I before I was an art student, I was actually a film student and I, I graduated. I have a degree in um, film theory, basically. So yeah, films have a huge importance in my life. And I started thinking about how, especially as a gay boy, then gay teen, then gay young adult and adult, they had an impact on the way I, I've seen myself, the way I've seen other queer people and the way other people see us through films. And yeah, I started thinking about representation and how and why it matters so much to me, but also to everybody who's concerned and also to everybody who is not, but who will learn or not learn based on what representation that we're given and that we're giving sometimes. Um, so, you know, it's like, I went to bed, it was midnight, got this idea, and then until 3 a.m. I was thinking, 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 like remembering what kind of movie that I could remember were uh, depicting gay boys, gay men, because it, this is what's concerning me. Um, this is what I relate to. And so I, you know, like on my note apps, uh, starting writing and then it's like when someone asks you what's your favorite movie or what's your favorite piece of music. I mean, the hell I know, I can't remember. I will forget some and like, I love them, but I will forget some. So I actually typed a list of gay movies on Google and found some on Mubi, um, found some on Sans Critique, which is a French like critic site for, you know, people who like movies. And I got pretty a pretty much big um, list, but you know, surprise, surprise, I ended up only choosing the ones that I would think naturally of because most of the time there were ones that you know kept with me the most. Um, so I chose nine films um, that would each would be associated with a cushion, and then why cushion? Well, um, my experience with these movies is really an experience of loneliness and of being ashamed of watching them. And so I would isolate myself in my room most of the time uh, during the night with headphones on so that nobody could hear and know what I was watching. Um, otherwise, I would wait for my parents to go on a weekend trip or you know, just go eat with our friends um, for dinner and I would watch it before they come home. Um, you know, it's there's a variety of contexts that I would watch these movies, but most of the time I would be alone. I would be feeling lonely, but also with time feeling some kind of comfort in watching these movies because as I was growing up, they, I was starting to not stumble on them, but actually seek them and look for them on, you know, movie catalogs and stuff. And, you know, I would get on my couch or in my bed and get a cushion to hug for lack of a better person or lack of actually anybody to watch it with. Because I was not feeling like watching it with anybody else than me. Um, because I was watching them for me, you know, watching them for finding some, you know, gay men loving each other, um, gay happiness, gay 
gay gay cool things i don't know like i was just looking for nice things to look at when my personal romantic life was pretty much non-existent because when i was young i was too afraid to tell it to anybody and when i got older you know i was i've been out for the world for like the past five years but being out does not mean that you found love and it does not mean that it's easy to find love or easy to you know trust or whatever but like this is for pretty much anybody not only gay people but but still it's weird it, it's a bit harder anyway anyway so that's why i decided to make cushions because that's what i would you know put all my loneliness and my you know jealousy of these characters that most of the time were in love when i was alone struggling to talk about it struggling to find someone um so yeah cushions and then for the sampler part um what i thought was interesting was to question masculinities within the world the world of needleworks um and that was kind of ignited because I read a book called Queering the Mas um, no, Queering the Subversive Stitch by uh, Joseph McBrin. I will put his name in the description box because it's a really cool book to read and it's some kind of a response to the Subversive Stitch by Rosita Parker. Um, mm, Rosita? Rosika? I have no memory oh my god i will put it also in the description box um but yeah kind of a response book to focus more on men within needle works because you know they've been there um they've been there a lot they've been stitching a lot however they were erased by other men who did not want um, masculinity to be associated with needle works and that's kind of like a bias of how the patriarchy actually rewrote um, the needlework's history, excluding men because they were trying to make it a strictly feminine thing. And if men were associated with it, then they were they were gay, basically. And as much as I say the F word a lot, if I'm being honest, um, as a mean of reappropriating myself, um, no, reappropriating re re the oppressor's weapon and, you know, his tool to harm us um, in order to make it some kind of a pride element. Um, same thing here. I wanted to make a sampler and I wanted to create new work to showcase that, well, yes, I'm gay and I'm a man who stitches. But, well, first it's okay. And also, I chose this medium and I chose this practice as a mean of, you know, manifesting and of... Um, I'm not protesting with it yet, but as a mean of expressing myself as a gay person, of saying something of my community through my work. Um, and I'm not saying that it's perfect. Um, I'm not saying that it's the most well-made thing. However, this is where I'm tending. This is where I want to go. Um, so yeah, what I did was that I rewatched every movie and isolated symbols and elements of it that would represent, for me, the love aspect or the interesting aspect, to say the least, for each movie. And then chart it and arrange it into a sampler. And for the border, I patchworked some fabric um, with uh, the idea to being more objective. The sampler is really subjective, is what I liked in the movie. The border is more what the movie looks like, what the color story looks like, what the shapes look like, what the overall aesthetic reminds me of. Um, so yeah, uh, this is kind of what is about um, Alice's Game Movies. And also, you will see, plot twist, 
that I have stitched everything quite correctly. However, I will only showcase it to people and to you here um, on the wrong side. So every cushion cover has been turned inside out and you will only see uh, the inside of it. Why? Because I'm actually telling you really personal stuff and you are seeing my insides. Um, you know, being gay is... I mean, I consider myself an aspiring gay artist and I want this etiquette because, again, it's a mean of... Um, it's a pride and it's a mean of manifesting my um, belonging to my community and to every past gay artist that has paved the way uh, for me to be here now. So this is something that I reckon. Um, however, this project is particularly personal because it's story not only of how I grew up as a gay boy, teen, young adult, but also of how lonely I was and of how sad I was and sometimes of how jealous I was, how aching I was. Um, and it's not something that I'm used to say and I'm still kind of wrapping my head around the fact that I'm telling this to really people that I don't know on the internet, but you know, it's what artists do. They're sharing stuff that are personal sometimes in an easy way, sometimes in a way that you have to decipher. And I kind of chose the decipher method. Um, the reason that I chose to put it inside out is because maybe as cross stitcher yourselves, you will kind of picture more easily what is what it looks on the right side because you're used to you know, seeing the backs of your work, and so you will know that this is cross on the other side. However, for people who are not used to it, they don't know how to read it. It's just at more abstract forms that are not looking like anything for most of them. Um, and it's a security for me to be like, okay, I'm telling you really personal stuff, but you can't read it all. You can't it's not an easy thing to access still. Um, so yeah, and then on a more technical level, it got me to think more about what I want to make with my bags because, you know, I was stitching it pretty normally, so front facing me, of course, but because I'm used to stitching, I started playing with the back and playing with the way I would stitch. So Victorian, um, Dutch, English, etc., etc., to either have Vertical, horizontal, these have traveling threads going in the back and creating motifs in the back and having a what I would call an ornamental back. So I don't know if it's, you know, I'm used to showcasing this to non stitchers, so they're always, oh my god, it's so cool, etc. etc. But now that I'm watching that, now that I'm giving it out to people who actually stitch maybe you will tell me that it's really like it's pretty much shit uh, <laughs> we'll see i mean feel free to say whatever you want of course um but yeah um so i'm gonna show you that oh and also um before i show you the cushions and you know talk a bit more in details for each one of them um there's also a big part of writing in this project because I read a lot and so I wanted to create editions, um, um, yeah, kind of little booklets, especially one because as as it's a school project, I still wanted to showcase what the front it was looking like for my professors to see. Um, and also because I, I really like the idea of having a, a real cross-stitch booklet, like the ones that you can buy. Um, so what I did, I did several versions of it. I will show you two. Uh, one I actually gave my mother uh, as a gift because <laughs> this is how she learned that I was gay. Um, she stumbled upon one of um, the prototypes for the book and read it and, you know, discovered, like, no. She knew what was, you know, assumed for the past 24 years. 
and quite a way of making coming out, isn't it? But she was really sweet. She left me um, a letter to read where she said that she, you know, loved me a lot and was really proud of how I, you know, was using all that to put my heart in my work, etc., etc. So really sweet, really cute. But anyway, still, that's cute that from a project that's about loneliness, I end up, you know, coming out to my mother. Anyway, so there's a version for her that is really cute. Honestly, really proud of myself. Um, it's really a book binding, like um, hardcover style book um, with a cross stitching book binding. Um, and the cover is actually stitched one-on-one -on -one with the name of the book, the name of the project. For me, I wanted to have one for myself as a mean of memory, but also as an archive. And so I made a really simple one. So you've got, I stitched the name of the project and then scanned it. So you have front and back of the piece to remind of the, to recall the um, whole stitching style of the cushions and then again book binding um, cross stitching book binding style and inside you will have so for example um, you've got the uh, you've got the name of the film that the cushion is inspired by um, director year then you've got a little prose a little text um, telling the story behind it and the relationship between me and the film and then when you open it you've got the chart uh, and same thing for the eight others um, so chart text title so yeah really um, really fun to make really happy with that also and then I made um, tiny 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 versions of each one um, so this is a really tiny format really cute so again title of the project backside the story split into different pages title of the movie and then when you open it you actually got the front side of the work actually But again, this is not, honestly, these ones I made for fun, like two days before the handout, <laughs> because I thought it was really cute. Um, but they're not made to be particularly shared because I don't want to showcase too much the front side of each piece. Anyway, this is now time to show you the cushions. And I've been teasing for 23 minutes, so I better get going. So, the first one actually is not made yet. It's the last one I have to stitch. But, you know, I've been stitching three cushions in, like, a week and a half because I had to hand it out for the end of the semester. And, as, like, um, the stitching would take me between 7 to 10 hours. And then I'd have to patchwork everything and make the cushions, etc. So, you know... I kind of got like a lot and so I'm having a little break until the last one um, but the first one is uh, The We and the I by Michel Gondry that I kind of teased you last uh, video um, and yeah basically it's about high schoolers going back home on their last um, bus trip um, before summer vacation and there are two gay characters who, you know, they're not, I mean, they love each other, but, you know, someone cheated, and so, a bit of drama, they break up, not particularly, like, dramatic ending, not particularly happy ending, it's just the fact that I've seen it when I was probably, like, 13, and it's the, fr it's generally the first one that I can remember where I saw gay characters and identified with them being like, oh my god, I want to be there, they're in school, they are openly gay, they are openly in love and together, and their friend supports them, this is what I want. 
Well, plot twist, I didn't have it. However, I have had this movie. And so for, for a bit, it was my favorite movie. And I remember that um, in English class, actually, in middle school, uh, I was asked what, what my favorite movie was by my teacher. And so I told her this one. And then she asked me what it was. And I didn't know what to say because what I wanted to say was like, oh my God, it's two gays. But then everybody would have known. So like, yeah. This is one of the core memory I have around this movie. But um, yeah, you will see this question anon probably this summer. Um, but yeah, having a little break. The second one, however, is Mr. Skin Sampler um, based on Mr. Skin by Gregoraki. Um, 2004, I believe. Um, so yeah. Each cushion is around, it's from 22 centimeter squares to 20, no, 32 centimeter squares to 34, kind of depends. And they are stitched with DMC 310 on 32 count flax uh, linen. 32 count, what a 32 count. Um, and then the patchwork, it's part, it's always a mix between um, toile, so like uh, a muslin fabric and some other fabric. So for, the, for example, the kind of two butterfly wings, the oval shapes are actually, you know what, um, Part of the legs that I cut from the shorts that I'm wearing right now um, and so yeah so this is the stitching and like I said I kind of played with for example some traveling here um, which kind of make these kind of like um, Smyrna stitches I don't remember but like a really cool feature I believe and then same on the face around the eyes and what I like also is that you know the fact that everything is you know hatching and stuff kind of reminds me of the TV snow and like of a censored kind of stuff that you can't really see and again it ties up to what I want to say it's like I'm telling a lot about me but still won't tell everything and you won't be able to understand everything. Um, so yeah, but still as a, you know, stitching purpose, um, what I really like to stitch was this part because in the movie, um, Joseph Gordon-Levitt's character, Neil, he has a beanie with like um, Strakhal motif on it. Um, and there's actually a shot that is so close that you can count the um, knitting stitches. And so this is a literal translation of the motif on his beanie. It's really cool. This is an alphabet um, that I um, that I charted based on something that he wrote that he wrote on a wall. Um, this were motifs from his shirt. This is from the beanie also. So this whole part, these are my initials and this is the date, like this is the year. These two things that you will see on every cushion and this is Neil. So yeah, it's a beautiful movie. It's really traumatic, of course. It's a really hard movie. It's a heavy movie. And I've seen it pretty young. I was like 13, 14 and I, was attracted to it because of Joseph Gordon Levitt, because I was fairly in love with him. Um, and so, you know, learning that he was playing a gay character, I was kind of like out of my mind and decided to watch it. And it's definitely not a um, joyful movie in its core. But still, you know, it's a lot of um, unsaid and a lot of. Um, things that you don't see, that you understand, but you don't see. Therefore, when you're 14, 13, and you have so little experience in life, and you've seen so little things, and 
read so many things, I did not understand the full, the full length of it. Obviously, I knew what it was about, and I knew how, you know, horrible it was. However, I think I was not traumatized because I did not get the full array of what it meant. And when I rewatched it, I realized that, oh my god, I've seen it way too early in my life. And it could have had quite a traumatic impact on me. But, you know, I was too busy being in love with Joseph, so, you know, <laughs> all that ended well. Um, but really beautiful movie. Gregorak is like a phenomenal director to me, but anyway, Missy Ruskin. And this is actually the first one I've stitched, so you will see that the format, the stitching area, is a bit wider for the other ones, because for the other ones, they are... Mm, they're either 90 stitches squares or 100 stitch stitching squares. I think 100. The second one is Jonas by Christophe Charrier. It's a French movie of uh, 2018. And you, I think it made its way to Netflix in other countries, so you may have seen it. If not, please watch it. It's really cool. Um, it's a beautiful movie. It's really... Again, it's not easy to watch. In the sense that... Well, what I actually really like about this movie is that... In French, we say film de genre. I don't know how you say this in English. Um, but basically, it's a thriller. Um, it's a thriller about two boys meeting each other in high school. And falling for one another. And their love stories really abruptly um, cut out short because of a specific violent event and exterior event. And it's how the one who is still here is, you know, coping with it and who, like, how he grew up with it. And what I like about it is that, you know, it's two boys in love. It could have been a girl and a dude. Would have been the same movie. In the sense that the fact that they are gay is clearly not the main focus of the film. Sometimes it's subject of, you know, some lines or stuff, but the core element of it is that they're in love and suddenly they can't anymore. End of story. Like... It's not, it's no coming out story, it's no like drama, oh my god, I'm being bullying, I'm being bullied, etc, etc. And I love that. I love that because as a gay teen, I needed that. I needed to see that our story and my story was not going to be only about being harassed, being, you know, being bullied, being, you know, being a victim, basically. Um, it's also about falling in love. It's about coping with, you know, some stuff. It's about having as shitty lives as straight people lives are. But not because I'm gay, because, you know, life sucks anyway. So, yeah, to me it was both really refreshing and also, I mean, it's a thriller, so it's kind of moving. But it's a really beautiful movie. And so, it's set in... It's, oh, fun story, it's set in 1987, uh, and there's a scene where the two lover boys are going to the movies, and they go watch Nowhere by Gregoraki, which is a really cool movie, and it's an Araki one, so I loved it. So it was quite fun to have the same reference. So yeah, here I stitched the two of them, because they're in love, and so I didn't want to separate them. Um... This is a Game Boy that they were playing on together. And this is a motif of one of the um, bus seat that they're taking to get to the movies, for example. And you can see, again, the traveling pattern that I've created with, um, with the stitching. Um, yeah. I really like the, the abstract uh, feeling to it. And the way I 
had stripes coming out, for example. Um, yeah. Ooh. This is Jonas. Then you've got probably my favorite one, and the last one that I did for now. Um, this is Happy Together by Wong Kar Wai. Um, and it date backs to, I think also 97. And it's a beautiful movie. Um, Wong Kar Wai is a phenomenal director, phenomenal photography. It's incredible. And once again, what I love about this movie is that it depicts the story of two gay men going to Argentina, uh, away from Hong Kong, and how, you know, they will eventually split up. And it's not a sport, like, from the get-go, you see that, you know, it's, it's some kind of a, like, a little toxic relationship, right? But again, it's not, like, them being gay is not the focus. Then being in love and then not in love is the main point of the film. And it's universal. And it's, to me, it's so important to normalize our experiences into the realm of, like, just, you know, love stories. Because our love stories are just love stories. They're not gay love stories in the end. They, hmm... It's funny to say that when the whole project is called a list of gay movies, it could have been a list of movies, um, but here it was important for me to, you know, pinpoint what was important for me in these movies. Um, but yeah, it's important to see stuff that you can relate to, and I don't like put in your face that, oh my god, you're different, so your life is different. It's like, yeah, um, I'm part of a community that's not the majority, but I can relate to the same kind of love stories that you do. I just need to see them, and you need to create them when people of our community are not given enough funds or, you know, opportunities to make them. So... I think that Wong Kar Wai did a great job at this. Um, you will see that there's only one boy here because, you know, I was not feeling like stitching his ex-lover. Um, and also, in this movie, so like, Wong Kar Wai's movie are phenomenal on a photography level, like, the aesthetic is really beautiful. And in this particular movie, there's a lot of repeating patterns and like, you know, the walls, the, um, the floor, etc, etc. And so I thought that would be the perfect way of making borders, like in a real, like true sampler way. And so I'm really happy that I did this and that I actually took the space to do it. Um, yeah, I love it. And so again, initials, year like a sampler. Love this one. And even the border, like the patchwork border is also an element of um, a wall of his apartment. Then you've got another Gregor Rocky movie because I'm kind of, <clears throat> sorry, a monomaniac. And it's called Totally Fucked Up. Um, 1993 and <clears throat> it's it's pretty much it's not a straight up experimental movie but you know it's a guerrilla movie so it's you know a lot of camcorder a lot of a really small team and something that in the end to me is really sensitive and really sincere and really authentic and this is why I loved it basically it's a story of six um, queer young people, a uh, couple of two so cute girls, and then four gay men, two being, um, together, and, you know, it's split in 15 fragments, um, and it's about how 
you know, in general, in Araki's movies, it's about how the young people are kind of depressed to see how fucked up the world is and how they're going to, you know, grow up in such a, a weird world. Um, and here it's also about the story of this character. And also there's still there's only one. Um, and, you know, he's in love with the guy, but he's also interested in others and kind of can't make out what he wants. And again, it's not particularly like a very happy story. Like the film is not about being a happy story and a happy ending. It's just about showcasing elements of a generation and showing, you know, feelings a lot. And I just bonded a lot with this character. And what I love about this teaching is that I did some knots. Look, oh my God, they're so cute. Aren't they so cute? Because, um, his shirt has buttons and so it's just one cross and I didn't want to travel threads here so I just did one cross and then tied a little knot and this is so cute oh my god and then the rest of it is actually an alphabet and some numbers because in the film as I said it's structured in 15 elements and you between all of them you have a screen um, stating like 1, 2, 15, and then some um, kind of like some intro titles in a way. Um, and then a TV, because it's part of the movie that I try to make some snow out of. So yeah, really love it. And if you can't, like, you can't really see it because you can't see the seams, but the patchwork is 14 squares plus the 15th one here. So yeah, love this movie. Then you have another French movie called Le Clan by Gael Morel, 2004 also. Um, I love this stitching. And it's actually the one that I showed you uh, in the mini zine earlier. Um, so this one you can see both sides. Um, Love this stitching, love this film. It's about three brothers um, who are really, who have a really intricate relationship between one another. And so the film is split into three parts, one per brother, and the last one is about the gay brother. And he he's living a um, love story with the best, the best friend of the three brothers, basically. Kind of the fourth brother, I'd say. And, you know, I don't know, it's so cute. Well, first, the guy, the friend, the brother, he really, really remind me of me. Basically, like, a really quiet guy, really non-extroverted, really low-key, you know, just, you know, passing through. And what I liked was that he fell in love with a guy that was not really, like, gay stereotypical in movies. Uh, because he's pretty much mask, um, he's really sport oriented, um, and he actually lives in a really masculine world, like straight up masculine world, and is straight passing. And so, you know, it's not like when you get on the mainstream level of like the movie industry, most of what we got is like you know cliches all the time. And so, having a film dating back to like 2004 having this character being in love and like being so romantic when he is so masculine well it's cool because you know like masculinities have been deconstructed uh for not such a long time and it is still not perfect so you know it's about getting some nuggets of like cool stuff here and there so really, really cute. And they're so romantic. They're like, they are so romantic. It's so cute. It's so cute. It does not end well because one is leaving, not because they have cheated or anything else, but just because, you know, sometimes love fades away and it's life. But, oh my God, it's a tragedy. Like, it's like, 
Ah, oh, so cute, so cute. So, yeah, here I still did the two of them because they're so cute together. Um, this is part of an alf um, a word that's on his t-shirt. Um, this is part of a spot that they were meeting a lot um, and doing capoeira together. Um, yeah. You can actually really see my initials here. Anyway, um, and then for the patchwork, there was a scene where I do, um, I don't know how you call that, but it's when you jump with a parachute. Um, so with they have these elements, and then this is the parachute represented. And kind of like a technical, I don't know if you, yeah, kind of a, Techwear fabric. I love this one. Then you got uh, Gods on Country by Francis Lee. And it's, yeah, 2018 also. 2017? One of the two. This is this one. Okay. This is such a beautiful movie. Again, it's one thing that is true with most of these films is that, um, again, the fact that they're gay is not the point. It's love stories before anything else. And especially here, they could have done such a terrible work at like representing and writing the story, whilst it is so well made to me it's like I don't know because basically if you don't know it it's um, set in a rural England um, in a farm where a young man like late 20s has to kind of you know take back the farm because his father is sick and so there's sick dad there's granny and there's him and because he obviously can't handle everything. The dad is calling for an immigrant worker to help them coming from Romania, a farmer in Romania coming to England to work. Um, and guess what? They fall in love. And I don't know, you know, it, it, it could have been so heavy and like, it's rural England and it's in a farm. So like ha everyone is homophobic everyone is very hostile and you know when they're gonna know that they sleep with one another it's gonna be like the drama show well it didn't happen that way it it was really cute again so many sweet scenes of like just you know cuddles and kissing and hugging and like honestly when you see that when you're a teen young adult and you're lonely and you're single and you're seeking for affection in any way possible while well, watching movies like that feels so cool because you know so many people grew up with rom-coms like i say love actually for example and they have seen scenes like that all the time well as i mean talking for gay like i'm not talking for gay men but as a gay man myself i've not seen that much Honestly, this series is consisted of nine films and it's not because like these are the nine best films. It's also because I don't have that much to like dive into, you know, and it's not like most of these films, they are not, they're quite old. They're like, you know, from the 90s, early 20,000s and it's not, I'm not saying that they did not exist. I'm saying that for example, when you're French and you're a teenager, you don't have access to them. You watch them if you need them, if you know them, and you seek for them. But they're not they're not the films that are gonna go on the telly at like 8 p.m. They're not the kind of films that you're gonna be able to see at the movie theater. So there's also a thing of accessibility to such uh, movies and such representations. So what I was you know, watching it on the TV was like really cliche stuff that were harming me. And so watching something like that, so sweet and so cute, 
at like 19, 20, um, was really cool for me. So two dudes, um, a lamb that they're taking care of together, uh, some instant noodles that they're eating together, some beer that they're sharing, and there's uh, in the film a wall, a stone wall that they have to um, fix together and see ya. So again, you can see the the way that, oh my god, I can't see anything. The way that I've worked with um, traveling films to create motifs and to separate his jacket from the others, um, other clothings. Um, yeah. And the patchwork um, kind of wanted something a bit not really structured to remind of the, the wall. And I used this kind of felty, woolly, brown fabric with the muslin. And then the last one that I will show you today is Beautiful Thing by Hedy MacDonald late 90s also so yeah the two main characters in the outfits that they're wearing when they go to their first gay bar together um this is part of their um projects um like architecture this is a part of a shirt that he's wearing and these are kind of motifs that they have on their bed sheets when they sleep together. And I love how, so he has a checkered vest and I did not know how to properly make it. So I just, I don't know, I did this, <laughs> but I like how it looks. And you can see that these are the most gigantic traveling threads. So like, it's really just hanging threads. Such a beautiful movie, and like, again, if if I had watched it when I was a teenager, I would have felt so good and so. I don't know. It's it's really really cute. Um, and in this movie, the fact that they're gay is more of a not an issue, but like more of a concern. But even then, it's it ends in a very wholesome and a very protective way. So it's it's just plain heartwarming. Um, and they're so cute together, the actors and the characters. And it's, honestly, it's a gem. And I'm pretty flabbergasted. I've not seen it before. And I really stum stumble upon it um, totally randomly on the TV in like the... Um, like the on-demand catalog um, and yeah it's honestly I don't know this movie is everything to me it's so cute um, and for the patchwork uh, again I wanted to kind of follow these shapes kind of geometric shapes so it's not straight they're kind of like um, diagonals and the fabric, to me, it was screaming 90s of like 90s flannel shirts that they're wearing. So it's just some remnants of a shirt that I had. And yeah, this is a list of game movies. So yeah, um, all that to say that representation matter. Oh my God, do they matter? So yeah, it's it's why i also like love series like young royals for example on netflix because i feel like they give hope to the teens of today like you're legitimate in what you feel and in what you experience and you deserve love and you will have love and it's something that's possible and it's something that will happen in you and it's Obviously, it's so dumb to say because, yeah, hello, we know. However, no, we don't. Like, we're when we were kids and we're gay or trans or bi or whatever, we don't know that. Like, people don't say that to us. I mean, at least when I was younger, they did not. 
when the generations before me were younger, they were not told that. So yeah, if a series on Netflix as, you know, corny and as cheesy as it could be, well, guess what? We need that also. Like, the streets, they have all the cheesy stuff that they need, and it's amazing. And we need that to grow up. We need cheesy stuff. We need love. We need cuddles. We need hugs. We need corny stuff because we need to be naive and we need to be, you know, full of hope and full of love. Um, and so it is well time that we queers have the same stuff and it is important. So yeah, um, all that to say that this was a list of game movies. I hope that you have liked it. Honestly, it's my first really big project and I'm really proud of it and I'm, I really cherish it. Um, so yeah, I hope that you will find it interesting. Um, feel free to, you know, ask questions or, you know, tell me about your experiences. Um, if you feel like you relate to what I said or don't, like, you do you. Um, feel free. In the meantime, I will show you the next video that will be a whip because as I finish my internship, I will have more time to stitch. Um, and oh my god, do I want to start new stuff? It's horrible. Um, I bought, like, I ordered new floss yesterday that I don't particularly need, but honestly, they were so cute, so... A new fabric that I don't need, but hey, I will need to use them in order to empty my drawer. Oh my god, our life is not a minimalist life. Um, yeah, have a good uh, day and then week. Enjoy your stitching, enjoy anything that you do. Um, on se dit à la semaine, dans deux semaines. Uh, profitez bien, et puis uh, bah, à plus.